Right, good morning, welcome back. Okay, today we're gonna to take the camshafts out and the followers as well, and make sure that everything inside the cam chest is as good and as clean and as pristine as all the internals of the other stuff I've taken off so far. I'm pretty sure it will be, but I'd like to know for sure. Now that involves taking off the brakes, the sprocket cover, the cam cover itself, take the timing out. There's lots and lots to do, so let's make busy. Right, there we are at last. Lots of faffing around, get all the peripheral stuff out of the way. Now we can finally release the 11 screws and take the cover off. Now there's 
quite a wide area that these 11 fasteners are spread over. It's quite a long oblong shape and that means the casing itself can twist if you don't undo it carefully. So we're going to undo them in sequence and an eighth of a turn at a time as before, obviously. Right, if you're doing this, taking this cover off just to trim it down or paint it or something else and you don't want to remove the cams, then be really careful when you take the cover off that none of them fall out. The four cams in there are referenced rear to front. So it's one, two, three, four. Number two cam, which drives the timing, is the biggest cam. And it holds number one and number three in place. So if, when you're taking the casing off and you slide it out, the only thing that holds those cams in is the two covers. So when you take the outer cover off, they just stay in their holes, just sit there. And it's quite possible for them to fall out if you're not careful. So if you don't want the cams to come out, it's quite important to make sure they stay there. Uh, otherwise you have to retime them. And that's not difficult, but it also means that if the top end of your engine is fully built still, if one of the cams falls out, the follower will fall down inside the hole and then you've got a lot more work to do to put it back together, taking the top off and everything else. So seriously, if all you wanna do is get the cover off, make sure when you start to take it off, that number two cam that's in there, stays put and doesn't start coming off with the cover. If it does, then reach in and poke it back in place and that will hold the others in. Hope that helps. Right, okay, another fabulous day of discovery, discovering that my engine is superb inside. No galling or scuffing on all the bushings here, they're absolutely like new. And they normally are, unless you've blown the engine up or run it out of oil, so fabulous. It's always said that these engines take 10,000 miles to fully run in, and it is true. As you can see, cross hatching still inside the cylinder bores, and all of these bushings, the cams, the cam lobes, just a nice little polish to them, exactly as it should be. I'm really happy with that. Now we've ordered all the parts and they're going to take about 10 days to get here. So when they get here, we'll show you what we've got and then we'll outline what we're going to do with the engine. But in the meantime, there's one more job to do in readiness and that is this cover. This big, ugly, typical sports to cam cover. It's got this big skirt all the way around the bottom when the cam chest itself, as you can see, is quite small. So it's a common mod at the moment to cut those down and polish them up, and make them neat and dinky and fit and look wholly better. So that's it. Join me in the next one. We'll cut the cover down, get that ready and hopefully by then the parts will be here we can start the reassembly. I'll see you next time. <laughs>